Ladies and gentlemen, life is full of mysteries. For example, we always wonder what's at the bottom of the ocean. They say something like 80 to 90 percent oceans haven't even been explored. Some people wonder, will a team from Buffalo, New York ever win a championship in any sport? But for me, everybody wonders, will I become a grandmaster or not? And you see, on this channel, I have taken you through a very long and up and down journey. But today, I am sharing with you a depressing, frustrating, terrible performance that I had in a tournament that I played today. So you're going to get to learn from these games and also laugh at me because it's only fair. I make so much content making fun of low elo chess. Well, today, you get to look at me like the circus animal. That's all I have to say. Here we go. This all began when I joined the Title Tuesday tournament on chess.com. This is my first game. My first game. 2,400 rated opponent. Plays knight to f3. I played g6. I went for a modern defense. My opponent went d4, transposing to a queen's pawn opening with the two pawns. And then I played my typical stuff. And at this point, it's a, it's a major decision for white. Is white going to try to take as much central space as possible at the risk of destabilizing their position? Will they play more solidly? Will they play a Catalan setup? My opponent went e4. I really like when people play like this against me because I go here. And now your pawn can't defend the other pawn. Many of my opponents like to jump forward, but I just get the knight into the d4 square. Right now I'm threatening to take and to take, or I am threatening to just take because of the pin on the knight. Many of my opponents play bishop e3 in this position, which this person did, and then I win e5. Now, I'm going to be honest, the way my opponent played in this game, I had actually never seen before. Uh, generally, everybody in this position plays d5. After d5, I put my knight here, and then we get into a long, complicated game. My opponent played in a way I'd never seen. They took on e5. And then I took, and I thought, well, that's easy. I'm just going to plant my knight here. I thought, you know, we're going to trade. They might play knight to b5, and, you know, then I'll just defend myself, and life will be good. But no, 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 no. They played queen a4, and I realized, like, wait a minute. I'm going to be under a lot of pressure here with the bishop and with the rook, and, yeah, it's kind of an annoying position. It's kind of an annoying position. Then they found this nice move, h4. I didn't even even begin to see that move you see I'm, i was very simply like well the bishop can't go there well after this it can and i'm gonna castle directly into the attack which is what i did and you know my my opponent started attacking my king i already had a very very unpleasant position from the opening but i stayed confident i stayed confident because i'm really handsome and i'm pretty good at chess and i'm 300 points higher rated than this person for a reason probably so i thought okay you know, they're trying to attack me. Some of you may be wondering if that's a free pawn. Well, it, it is, but it comes with a price tag of doubling your pawns and potentially just creating a line of attack here. And just in general, when it's quite clear your opponent has way more pieces in the game, which, you know, they do. Every single one of my opponent's pieces is participating in, in some form of the game. So I'm pretty stuck here. So I said, you know what? Let's go knight to d4. Let's block the rook let's block the bishop and, and my opponent played probably the best way which is to trade off some pieces yeah and i was like well i kind of have to trade if i don't trade i'm going to lose my knight and then i'm going to lose my queen and uh if i don't take this it's just going to live there which is unpleasant my opponent is a move away from opening up the position so i thought okay let's let's play like this let's trade the queen because the side that is defending in chess should probably go for trades and i thought all right well now i have an attack on the center I also have a passed pawn, right, which is protected. Life is good. My opponent took, took, and played king here. And that's when I realized, ah, I, I'm not actually threatening to take the pawn because this pawn, right, this should be six. However, I found a way to sacrifice a rook, which, you know, is just about all I'm good for in chess. So I took with a very simple idea to play bishop e6 and sacrifice the rook and win the pawn. And I thought, bishop, two pawns, is five. Rook is five. Easy. Except I'm a moron, and I actually just lost the game. It would have been better for me to take with a pawn, which I wouldn't have done in a million years, because I thought it was bad to split my pawns. I was like, why would I leave this pawn's friend? Well, you know, they've got another friend, but 
None of this was even necessary. I didn't have to do this whatsoever. I could have just like tried to bring my king or brought the rook up and over. None of this was necessary, but I did it and you know, this is just losing because my opponent can go e7, which somehow both of us missed because we thought king f7 and that's it, but rook h7 and white is winning because I can't protect e8 and g7. Yeah, so that's how I lost the first game, but my opponent didn't punish me. They played king g2 and suddenly I was able to run back and def but now I'm still losing, but both of us miss it. And what ends up happening is we get to the following position, where my opponent has blocked my pawn, I have three extra pawns, but my king is very weak, so there's a lot of counterplay on the horizon. Uh, I lose this pawn, but then I'm gonna go win this pawn. Now I thought, well, I'm better. You know, I've got 24 seconds. Again, I'm 300 points higher rated. I'm very handsome. And uh, I mean, I have three pass pawns. I have three connected passers. So all I gotta do is get my king over there and push these pawns. All right, what I shouldn't do is lose this pawn and allow this pawn to promote. That's one, one thing I should not do, so I'm winning. But as you know, you're watching this video for a reason. At this point, I have a total mental malfunction, and in this position, I spend half my time and I trade the rooks. You really shouldn't trade the rooks in a rook endgame if you've only got one and they have two, even if you have three pass pawns, because it's actually shockingly difficult to move them. And, uh... Yeah, well, my opponent, you know, started attacking my pawns and then went after that one. And here I panicked. I have two seconds. So I started, you know, I, I started throwing the game. But, but then I regained my composure and now my pawn's close to queening. And now the move bishop b2 is winning. So I can't push, but I can shield. I can protect my, my you know, bishop b2 and I, and I enable this and I win the game. And then I win king d7. Okay, so now it's back to equal. King c4. And then here I, I push my opponent's king back. I played b4, I have three connected pass pawns, look how strong they are, my opponent, you know, can't, can't do anything, I'm just gonna walk my king over there, okay, easy, alright, easy, I just gotta be careful, a little bit careful, and I was not careful at all, and now the pawn's on f7, and now I'm losing, rook a8, it's probably a draw, a2, and my opponent throws the game because pawn to c3, and I lose on time, so I had two seconds, and in this position I needed to find c3, just pushing as many pawns as I can. My opponent obviously can do this, but then I go here, and they can't simultaneously stop me from queening and enable the promotion. Instead of all of that, I just choose—I just chose to lose on time. So I had a, you know, a, a better end game with three connected pass pawns against somebody 300 points lower rated than me, and I lost. I lost like a complete idiot. Wonderful. Okay, we are off to a good start. Congratulations to my opponent. Now we are moving on through the event. I managed to win one of the games, uh, but uh, this is against a 2490. Okay. I put in place e4. I played a French, and uh, I got to one of my favorite positions. Uh, this is one of my favorite lines, where you take and you, you double your pawns like this. And then what you try to do is you try to castle queenside. I've played this so, so, so much. And then you have the open file here. So, knight to f3, knight to c6, and I'm simultaneously ready to go like this. But I'm also ready to strike in the center if necessary. My opponent plays c3, it's just a solid move, nothing special. And now I strike in the center. Again, I can play b6 or e5. I chose to attack the center. And right away, my opponent made a terrible decision. I was very critical of this decision. I was trying to explain it. You cannot trade a bishop for a knight for no reason. Like, you have to be able to explain yourself. For example, if in this position you say, well, it's to damage my opponent's structure and to destabilize their center, that's a reason. My opponent took the knight, and I could take with the pawn, but I went like this, and white is worse than nine moves. Like, taking here is just not a good move, because if pawn takes e5, you're not winning my pawn, I can always take on g2, oops, I can always take on g2, and plus I have this open file, and all of those are light square weaknesses. Look, they're all light squares, right? So I was very critical of this decision making by my opponent, I'm already just much better with black. And I thought, okay, this is going to be a relatively straightforward game. I'm just going to put my bishop on g4, I'm going to castle, and I'm going to just win. Like, my opponent already cannot castle because they're trying to defend themselves. So I play this, completely winning position in 11 moves. I thought, okay, nice, we're getting back into title Tuesday, good stuff. Opponent plays d5, natural move because you want to avoid e4, you want to avoid the pressure, right? So now I play a move where my queen keeps an eye on everything, queen b5. Keeping an eye on this, keeping an eye on the diagonal, and keeping an eye on the pawn. And opponent plays h3, and very simple combination. I can take the knight. They cannot take, 
Because of the rook, if they take like this, yes, they have eyes on this, but I'm getting in. Like, I'm threatening everything. And that's what I did. Take, 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 rook c1. And this is under attack, but I decided, you know what? My opponent is never castling. They move both rooks, so they can't castle. So let me castle to rub it in their face. Then I will take that, 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 whatever. Opponent went here. And now I thought this was a clever move. I kind of like bishop c5, deflecting the bishop away. Some of you may be wondering why my opponent did not take on f6. Probably because they would remove the defender of the d5 pawn, but queen f6 is a totally reasonable move. And so I played bishop c5, I traded, and I went up two pawns. 18 moves, two pawns up. My opponent did something smart, right? They, they walked the king out of danger to g2, right? And life is good. So this is the position. And they played king g2 because the king will now go to the corner. Now, when you are two pawns up in an endgame, you, you have options, okay? You can try to eat as much as you can. I would not recommend this move because you open up the lines for your opponent, right? And my king is there. And I, I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend trading the queens. Just bring the queen back, defend, try to trade queens. If your opponent doesn't trade queens with you, use your queen as an attacking mechanism. Play h5, h4. Play f5, f4. Right? Get in on the second rank with your rooks. Instead of all of that, I blundered the most important pawn in my position. Just a one mover. Just a one mover. I went from completely winning to not only down only to not only up one pawn. I blundered a pawn in my king. I blundered my king. That's it. I'm completely busted. The computer is already saying sack the rook and force a draw. The computer is literally already saying sacrifice your rook and just make a draw. Queen g5, king h2, just make a draw. Queen f4, king g2. But I, I mean, I, I saw rook g3, but I thought it just didn't work. I mean, I, I thought I was like either winning or losing. I didn't see that there was a draw. Plus, I was like, ah, I'm going to double and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to survive. And, you know, you can see here that if I take a, this pawn, which for whatever reason I didn't take because I was so rattled, I spent a full minute after that just being like, why did I, how did I... It's literally just a direct arrow. You got to be careful when you castle queenside. This is, a, this is a lesson for like people 2,000 points lower rated than me. And he took, and now I'm just completely busted. C4, we get into this crazy rook endgame. Now I'm back to okay, but I have three seconds. Now my opponent starts playing super weird here. Starts playing super passively. And I take over the game again. And my opponent decides, okay, th this is actually very instructive. My opponent has a moment here where they can go active, double the rooks active, or passive. Passive would lose the game. Just so you understand, you can't double your rooks into defending. That is a complete waste of rooks. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to overwhelm you slowly. Like, you're, you can't move. Whereas my rooks will permanently pressure you. And then you're going to get split up, and then you're going to have a bunch of weaknesses, and then I'm going to go on to win the game. So it's very instructive that my opponent gave up the pawn and just went with the rook. And then we get into a crazy scramble, and I take pawns, and all the pawns are falling, but I'm not winning. I'm, if anything, I'm losing! I blundered my pawn! And now my opponent brings the rooks around, and that's it. A perfect setup. And they just push, they trade, F3, the game is over. I, I, I lost some time, but okay, I had like two seconds. Anyway, this is just... The pin, I cannot play e3 because they take my rook and they easily get back. I lost another game to 2400. Oh my god. And this one was even worse than the first one because this one was just, you know, it was a crushing attack from the opening. I just got a completely winning position. And then they couldn't take the pawn here, I guess, because of this. And mentally, I just tuned that out. I just, for just forgot that there was any difference and wild. Just a one mover. All right, terrific. We roll right along. This was the next game, right after losing this game. In this game, you might be very surprised. I am playing against myself. I am playing myself. That is a profile photo of me. I don't know why Dina, ba Dina Belenka is a, uh, is, a, is a chess content creator. She's a title player. Uh, plays a lot of tournaments. Makes a lot of content. I have no idea why her profile photo is me. Super weird behavior. But that's besides the point. Um... I don't know. I, I don't know. I was very confused by this. This was my old profile photo, and now I upgraded to this professional headshot. Anyway, I was very excited for this game because Dina is a Karl Khan player, and as we all know, Karl Khan is the best opening in the world, but only when I play it. When other people play it, easy money. D4, D5, and I just made a video about the Alien Gambit. Obviously, I gotta play the freaking Alien Gambit. So I go to play the Alien Gambit. Dina plays Bishop F5, so you can't quite get an Alien Gambit, but I'm determined. Now, if black plays h6, 
and I sacrifice technically, technically, this kind of takes the fun out of the opening, but, you know, we'll probably figure out something and maybe, I don't know, it's obviously not good. But Dina doesn't do any of that. She just plays in the most solid way. She never plays h6, so I never get to sacrifice on f7. And, you know, she just plays like this. And then the devil on my shoulder was like, you can sacrifice on f7 now. Now, of course, with white, you can play like rookie one and have a microscopically better position. But I played the alien gambit to play the freaking alien gambit. Now, this is not exactly the alien gambit. I get a check. I force the king to the corner I take. So I have two pawns. But the difference when you play the alien gambit is you have a bishop. And frequently, more pieces than that. You have the rook. Uh, this is not exactly the alien gambit. And that's because black is able to get all the pieces out. So at this point, I know that I'm, you know, I'm obviously in a little bit of a tough situation. However, I, you know, I, I decide, okay, I'm going to get my pawns out, going to get the bishop out, going to play here. That's what I'm going to do. My first move is already a blunder, apparently. What I needed to do here is I needed to play energetically. If you sacrifice a piece, you have to play fast. Not like speed-wise. You, you, you need to control the pace of the game. So this move is not possible because of a fork on c7. So bishop d2 would have probably forced her to play here, and then I would play here with different ideas. And that would have actually been interesting, but I didn't develop a piece. I mean, I just brought a pawn to the center thinking I'm going to anchor my, my knight on e6, but it's too slow. And now, now she plays this move, and now she's getting rid of my knight. And if I'm just a full piece down, it, I mean, it's not going to go very well. So I played the alien gambit, but I... Uh... <laughs> Uh, she has five pieces in the game, so this is a really, really, really horrible handling of a gambit. Really bad. She consolidates very nicely, and, uh, she's just winning. And now I'm like, uh-oh, I'm up a minute, but I'm not so sure I'm gonna be able to hold this one. She plays bishop d6, I defend my knight, but, uh, she does queen d7, and, like, at this point I realized I'm gonna lose. <laughs> like... I should have played something better. I, I mean, okay, I didn't get my alien gambit. I probably should have played a different opening. It's kind of what happens when you met when you you know. There's that. There's the the, the meme. Um, F A F O. Fafo. You know, fudge around and find out. There you go. We don't curse here. I've never said a curse word in my life. Queen A five led to a strong consolidation on her part, and uh, in this position, I I it started to sink in that. Um, I just have one less knight than my opponent. Whereas the other two games, you know, this was a balanced game. It was a 10-10 game. It was a horrendous decision in an endgame, and then I lost on time in a panic. Uh, this one was a, was a completely ridiculous blunder. This was pure arrogance and uh, disrespect, and it completely backfired. And I mean, she just simplifies the position, brings her king out again to bring the rook, because the king, the king needed to get out of the danger early. But now that she just removed all of my pieces, yeah, I'm not going to be able to win this position. And, um, I, I, just, nice, nice move. Attacks my rook. I either have to take and give up the file, or, uh, or I, I don't even know. And, you know, I'm completely lost. And I have nine seconds versus a minute. Now, to my credit, somehow I didn't completely lose. And I went here, and then, you know, we, we actually got into a little bit of a scramble. Like, I almost made a comeback? I have two pawns for a knight, which is not that horrible. She went here, and I actually thought I might save the game. Now, I did something extremely idiotic here because I have four seconds. When you are playing an endgame, you don't want to overextend your pawns. You need to bring your king. Like, this is stuff you teach beginners. And I went here, which is so stupid! Oh my god, I cannot even stress how dumb that is. Your pawns need to go together. You cannot create holes in your position. This creates massive light squared weaknesses. Just bring the king. I was, you know, I was moments away from my king getting stuck on the last rank. And here we're sort of frozen. She can't move her rook. I can't move my rook. I should have just went king f3, but she, now, now that's it. Now black is probably just going to convert this. Uh, and she's able to play king f5. Whereas if I had just kept my king on f3 and pawn on h3, I would have been able to play g4. So for instance, king f3, king f5, h3, h5. Like th this is getting closer and closer to a draw. Because the more pawns I trade, the better it is. Obviously, I could have taken, you know, I could have taken on g7 there uh, if h5 was played. But 
that's my point. Anyway, uh, I'm stupid, and this is just all part of the video, and uh, yeah, Dina does a nice job here. For whatever reason, I decided the rook didn't, wasn't good there anymore. <laughs> Playing chess like, you know, uh, l l like a donkey kicked me in the head. Great job by her, and that's it. And um, my idiot king is getting swarmed. This is very well done. Uh, she brings in the king, she brings in the knight, and uh, I tried to go for stalemate. I thought maybe there was a stalemate somewhere, but uh, there is no stalemate. And uh, she converts, and she won. And uh, that was a horrible treatment of the alien gambit. That was the Gotham version of it, which is, don't play this. Even if the computer says it's okay, you don't have enough pieces, don't do it. And the last game that I have for you, this was, uh, I think, right after. This was, um, I started the title Tuesday 1 out of 4, and down about 45 rating points. Uh, this was a game against a, a Ukrainian Fida Master. Just like the first game, we got, you know, I played the modern, but then there was no c4. Like in the, in the first game, my opponent played d4, c4. In the second game, my opponent played regular king's pawn. And I, I really like the modern because, you know, white tends to castle queenside. And I play like this. So I anticipate h5. I'm ready to kind of poke out and not allow the opening of the position. And then I play rook c8 and I play c5. And this is the way you attack, right? So in this game, that's exactly what I did. I played rook c8. I played the, the thematic idea of the opening. My opponent went here. And uh, black is already better. So again, from the opening in every one of these games, uh, I, was I wasn't super comfortable in the first game, but, you know, chess is not only about the opening. Uh, you know, I can't just play like deep pawn takes and try to win. It's, it, it's not so simple, but I played this. And then I went here. And um, already the computer is saying play b4. Just go attack. If cb, you take cd, and you win uh, material. If uh, ab, then you take, and then you play queen a5. It's actually extremely difficult to defend the king. So I should have just kept attacking. Instead, I plopped my knight onto the g4 square with the idea to take on e3. And in this position, I, uh, we simplified. Opponent went d5. Idea of d5 is to get me to take or to push at which point f5 opens up, and that is, you know, you gotta, certain squares in your mind have to illuminate, deluminate, that's not a real word, but I'm a chess YouTuber, so I'm allowed to invent words. Like, a moment ago, both my pawns control that square, you gotta realize every time you move a pawn, you, you win something, right? You win the dark squares, you lose the light squares, so on this move, I was like, okay, I can't let the knight come to f5. None of my opponent's pieces have any forward mobility, which is why I have the advantage. So in this position, I played c4, I traded the queens, uh, and uh, I just went king up. And here black is better. Black is better for two reasons. Black has the bishop pair and a better set of minor pieces, so knights and bishops for black are advantageous. Black controls the, will control the entire f-file, which will be very annoying for white. Uh, black also has kind of the forward momentum. Like if one side is going to push pawns into the other person's side, it's black. Black has more space. Uh, so those are all the ideas. But I have a weakness which my opponent, you know, begins loading up on. And at this point, I sort of struggled. I mean, I have a 1 minute and 20 second time advantage, and I'm nearly... Th I'm 350 points higher rated, so I'm a massive favorite. I have a 1 and a half minute time advantage. But you're watching this video for a reason, and the reason is... Sometimes it's it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Like, sometimes your brain just doesn't work. Sometimes your opponents play quite well. Um, what do I do? Well, I couldn't play g4. Anytime you want to push a pawn to attack a knight, you got to realize the knight could zigzag around the pawn, and now black is just much worse, because the knight is getting there. So you can't do that. Okay, what if I play a5, b4? Maybe that would have been a good idea, a5, b4. Uh, the point is that if I play b4 right away, I, I do just lose a pawn. So I gotta kinda like time it the right way. I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I played rook f7. My opponent went here to try to bring the knight to g4. And I decided, okay, I'm gonna attack the center because I think that's the right thing to do. It, it wasn't. It completely was not the right thing to do. And now white is better. So I have a, like a position here that's visually and practically probably better for white, uh, for black on paper. But I have no idea how I was supposed to push the advantage here. Maybe it would have been worth, like, stalling. Maybe I should have played... I don't know. I Like, I, I cannot understand it. Maybe the right game plan was bishop c6. Like, let's say, knight h2, bishop c6, knight g4. Like, maybe rook, you know, rook d7, rook b8. This was the way I should have played. Rook d7, and then rook b8, and try to play for b4. I have no idea. I, I actually have no idea. I did my best, and it my best was completely wrong. 
94, my opponent defends everything, and now what? 10 seconds, though. I was like, my opponent's got 10 seconds. Of course I have to be better. So I'm like, I'm going to trade pieces and win. How? How am I going to trade pieces and win? I play a5, knight g4. How am I going to trade pieces and win? I'm worse. And then in this position, I did something unforgivable. What I should do here is I should put a rook on the b-file. Or d-file to defend my bishop and then play b4. Like if I'm trying to play this, my opponent has three seconds. I mean, it's really hard to play chess when you have three seconds. You know, you just saw that in the, in the first game that I played. You're going to panic. You want to do something. I went b4. I have 55 seconds on the clock. So not only am I making panic decisions when I have low time, I'm making panic decisions when my opponents have low time. Horrible day of decision making. Horrible. This is an idiotic move. Who am I trying to attack with? My king? Why is my king trying to attack the king? That doesn't even make sense. And let's not forget, my king is defending my bishop. So now I have to go backwards. And now I go from equal to worse to completely lost. Completely lost. I'm going to lose this pawn. I'm going to lose this pawn. And worse, I'm going to get mated. Like, I'm going to find myself mated. My opponent has two seconds on the clock. Two se Two seconds and I throw the game! King d5, knight d3. It's discovered check. And it's even worse than that. It is now mate. My rook is hanging. My bishop is hanging. Luckily, the chess gods looked down and went, Gotham might throw his computer out the window if his opponent plays rook takes d6, which leads to checkmate after here, 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 king d2, and now basically any knight move. No, literally any knight move, by the way. That's mate, that's mate, that's mate, that's mate, that's mate. You can't eat your own rook, but knight f4. Every move is mate. I get ladder mated in the center of the... That is crazy. But here my opponent took my rook instead, and now is just completely winning, but also panics, allows my king to run into the position, and now it's anybody's game. Now I eat my opponent's pawns, now they take my pawn, we start pushing, it's a scramble, it's a crazy game, and uh, I, I mean, I can't win because... I can't really promote, h6. Apparently I was winning here if I played rookie six check, deflecting the rook, from, but it's probably still a draw, believe it or not. But uh, yeah, we uh, end up trading and we shuffle a bit and then we trade it. So I, I made a comeback in this event. I, um, I did end up winning some games in a row, but uh, then I lost the last game of the event to a 2800. So all in all, a completely horrible tournament. Uh, and the point of today's video is just to show you that sometimes it's okay and your brain doesn't function. And I am still miles and miles and miles away from being a grandmaster. And I make panic decisions when I have low time. I make panic decisions when my opponents have low time. I miss so many of my opponent's resources. A 2700 rated Blitz player should not have this type of performance, but that's life. And sometimes it happens, sometimes no amount of coffee. This is my second large coffee of the day. The first one didn't do anything. It didn't. You know? I could take an ice bath, I don't know. But sometimes it's just not your day. That's all I have for you today. Get out of here.